Hey y'all, welcome back and thanks for stopping by today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie and today I have a very special video that is full of Scandinavian inspired Easter DIYs. This video is also part of the Easter Around the World collaboration and includes a huge giveaway, so be sure to stay tuned to find out more. Let's go ahead and jump right into DIY number one. For this project, I used one package of these plain white Easter eggs that I picked up at Walmart. The first thing I did was use a tool with a sharp tip to poke holes in each end of the eggs. This particular tool that I'm using is an embossing stylus from Dollar Tree that the ball tip had broke off on one end. It turned out to make the perfect size holes in the eggs for the size of the wreath form that I decided to use. Once I had all the holes poked in the eggs, I used some apple barrel paint in the color Toasted Marshmallow and mixed in some apple barrel paint in the color white to lighten it up to a lighter cream color. I started by mixing in just a little bit of the white paint and added more white as needed until I got the desired color. Once I was happy with the color, I placed the eggs on a skewer and gave them all one good coat of the paint and set them aside to fully dry. To decorate the front of the eggs, I used a few of the brown and white spotted feathers from this pack of guinea feathers that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. To attach the feathers, I used a generous even layer of Mod Podge and placed the feather on top on the side that I wanted to be the front of the egg. I did end up having to trim down a few of these feathers so that they would fit properly and lay flat. I then added another layer of Mod Podge on top of the feather using a paintbrush to sort of fan out the feathers so that it would lay nice and flat and to seal it. Once I had the feather on the egg, I went ahead and covered the rest of the egg in one coat of the Mod Podge so that it would have a uniform finish and set it aside to dry. I repeated this process on all 12 of the eggs. Here is how all 12 eggs looked once they were completely dry. For the wreath form, I used the medium sized gold wreath ring from a 3 pack that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I used wire cutters and snipped the ring open along the original seam so that I could slide the eggs onto the wreath. I then placed 11 of the eggs onto the wreath. I found it much easier to use a flashlight against the side of the eggs so that I could easily see the ring inside the egg to line up the holes. If you can't find one of these wreath rings, you can always use one of the regular wreath forms and cut out the center, use a wire coat hanger or a thicker wire and create your own wreath ring. To close the ring once I had all the eggs on the form, I went ahead and used some hot glue on each end of the ring and wrapped it with some tape. I then pushed the two eggs on each side of the tape as close to the tape as possible, then wrapped a little piece of tape and wire between the two eggs with some twine from Dollar Tree, using hot glue to secure it into place. I don't know exactly how many times I wrapped the twine around the ring, but I just kept wrapping until I was happy with the thickness of the twine. Once I had the ring wrapped, I went ahead and added a dab of hot glue on each side of the twine and pushed the two eggs up against the twine to hold them in place so that the eggs wouldn't twist and the feathers would stay showing. I continued to wrap a small section of the ring between each egg with the twine. I made sure to leave enough room for me to have a wrap section between all 11 eggs. I used the tip of my pointer finger as a guide to how wide to wrap each section. This step is completely optional, but I like the darker look of the twine once the fuzzies have been burned off, so I went ahead and took a lighter and quickly hit all the twine to darken it up and clean up the fuzzies. I do recommend using a candle lighter if you choose to do this. It is much easier and much safer. To finish off this wreath, I used some more of the twine to create a hanger and used a generous amount of hot glue to attach it to the back side of the wreath where I reattached the two ends of the ring. I am really happy with how this wreath turned out and I cannot wait to display it on my front door. You could also use these eggs in a basket, bowl, or vase if you didn't want to create a wreath with them and I think I may end up making a few more for my vase. Let's take a few minutes to talk about the Easter Around the World collaboration. I've joined up with 31 other amazing creators to bring lots of Easter decor inspiration today. We are each recreating Easter decor from a destination of our choice. I chose to do Scandinavian inspired Easter decor and I for one can't wait to see what the other amazing creators chose as their inspiration. So be sure to check out the link in the playlist in the description box below to see what they create. As I mentioned earlier, there is a huge giveaway going on with this collab. There will be four winners in total, 
Three lucky winners will get a $50 gift card and one lucky winner is going to get a basket full of Easter goodies. You may be asking, well, how do I enter? And entering is easy. All you have to do is listen for the secret word in each of the videos on the playlist and leave a comment below each video with the secret word. The giveaway ends on March 25th and the winners will be chosen on the 26th. This giveaway is open to U.S. only. I'm sorry to my international friends. And you can find the terms and conditions of the giveaway in the description box below. Good luck and remember to listen for my secret word coming up soon. Let's go ahead and get into DIY number two. For this simple and easy DIY, I started by going outside and cutting a few branches off of a fallen tree limb and arranged them in a vase that I had on hand. Once I had the branches arranged in the vase, I used more of the guinea feathers from Hobby Lobby and hot glued them to the ends of the tree branches. I try to put a feather on the ends of every branch, but it's really a personal choice. You can add as many or as few feathers as you like. You can also use thread or yarn to tie the feathers onto the branches if you don't want to use hot glue. I chose to use the feathers I already had open, but I've seen these Easter trees made with bright colored feathers as well as solid colored feathers, so it's really just up to you and your taste. I think using pastel colored feathers would look just as gorgeous and even more festive, but this year I think I'm going to be keeping my Easter decor more on the neutral side of the color palette. And that's it for this one, y'all. It was super simple and I absolutely love how it turned out. You can see that I did decide to change out the vases because I thought this one looked a little bit better than the other one did. Moving right along to DIY number three. For this quick little DIY, I used six of these white plastic Easter eggs from Walmart. Using a fine tip black permanent marker, I drew different geometric type patterns and shapes onto each of the eggs. On the first egg, I just made lines of dashes. On the second egg, I made three different designs all on that one egg. For the third egg, I decided to do a pattern of little V's. On the fourth egg, I made a set of little up and down triangles and filled them in. Then on the fifth egg, I decided to make X's all over. And then for the final egg, I decided to do triangle trees and fill them in. What I love most about this project is the design possibilities for these eggs are endless. You can create as many different designs as you want. Once I had all the sides of the eggs covered in the patterns, I took this bowl that I found at our local thrift store and built a nest out of the light colored Excelsior grass from Dollar Tree. And then I just arranged the eggs in the nest and that was it for this one. This one was so quick and easy, but I think it turned out so cute and will look perfect on my coffee table this Easter and well into spring. Okay, listen up y'all. My secret word for the giveaway is rooster. Just leave me a comment below with the word rooster somewhere in there and you'll be entered into the Easter Around the World giveaway. Remember to check out the playlist and listen for the secret words to enter on the other channels as well. You must enter on every channel to win, and all the rules and info about the giveaway as well as a link to the playlist is going to be in the description box below. Also, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, what are you waiting for? Click that button and stick around. I have a lot of fun projects on the way. Now moving on to the final DIY. For this DIY, I used three of these plastic fillable Easter eggs from Dollar Tree. I started by cutting the two pieces of the egg apart and then very carefully using a sharp utility knife cut a hole in the bottom piece of the egg just large enough so that I could fill the egg with plaster. I then repeated this step on the other two eggs. Next, I took some plaster of Paris that I picked up in the home improvement section at Walmart and following the directions on the box, I mixed one cup of plaster with a half a cup of cold water and mixed it together until it was nice and smooth. I chose to use the plaster of Paris because it was cheaper than a bag of Quickcrete and I will be more likely to use the plaster in the future for other projects. You could go ahead and use Quickcrete for this project if you wanted to go that route. I used some masking tape to seal off the little holes in the top of the eggs as well as seal the seam where the two pieces snapped together to keep the plaster from leaking out while it was drying. Once I had the egg completely sealed, I went ahead and spooned the plaster into the egg. I worked a little at a time making sure to tap out all the air bubbles ever so often and continued to add the plaster until the egg was completely full. I then set it aside to dry. 
I repeated these steps on all three eggs and set them aside to dry for a good 24 hours. I will say that after doing this project, I would definitely recommend wetting the inside of the eggs with water or some type of nonstick spray before putting the plaster in because without it, they are a little hard to demold. After letting the plaster set up for a good 24 hours, I removed the tape and very carefully cut away the bottom of the plastic egg. This is where it was a little difficult to get the plaster egg out of the mold, but with a little patience, it wasn't too bad. Once the bottom of the egg came off, I was then able to just twist the top off. Once I had all three eggs unmolded, I took a sanding block from Dollar Tree and smoothed out the bottom of the eggs so that they would stand on their own. I also smoothed out around the eggs where the two pieces of the plastic egg came together. It didn't take much to smooth the seam out. I didn't worry too much about it being perfectly smooth because I wanted a natural concrete or rock type finish. When I was happy with the way the eggs looked, I took some folk art paint in the color medium gray and painted two of the eggs. I decided to leave one of them the plaster color and once the paint was dry, that was it for this one. I love how these three little eggs turned out. You could make as many as you wanted fairly cheap and you could even use the larger eggs if you wanted to create more of an arrangement. Here's the final reveal of all of today's projects. I absolutely love how they all turned out, and if I had to choose a favorite, it would be the feather tree. I love the natural elements and neutral colors in these projects, and I can't wait to display them for Easter. Let me know in the comments below which one is your favorite. Also, don't forget to leave the secret word to be entered into the giveaway, and be sure to follow along the playlist in the description box to finish your entry. Again, all the details are in the description box. Thank y'all for spending a part of your busy day with me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help out my channel. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, go ahead and click it and stick around. Lots of stuff coming soon. I'll see y'all next time.